Hello my soccer universe. It should be a joyous video because for the first time I have a review video where I'm not doubling up any teams from Germany and Austria, which makes me very proud. However, for Lusk a new low has been reached and I'm wearing Lusk despite losing them. Usually I choose a team that the team that has the best move in either league to wear. In Austria, I guess I will never wear any of these teams because I just can't, but it makes for a nice background to have those three up there. So usually I would have won Freiburg, but this will be a last heavy video. So I decided, yeah, I I still support this team. And I will always support them. However, things are not going well. So um, just a heads up. This will be very last heavy and I want to apologize also a little bit to Freiburg uh, fans because I should have been wearing Freiburg now because they would deserve all the accolades here. But, you know, I'm reeling a little bit and let's get it out of the way. Um, we'll start in Austria uh, where you see the results here. Uh, for me, um, two remarkable results on Saturday. I really only saw the last game here uh, because you saw in the video I had loads of other things to watch. But Austria Vienna disposing of Ried 4-1 is a big one because I think Austria Vienna maybe something is getting uh, going and Wolfsburg continue their good form now with a 2-1 win in the Derby against Klar and Klangfurt Hartberg. Late equalizer against uh, Rapid Vienna and Salzburg in the 1v2 matchup easily dispose of Sturm because they are easily the best team out there and so Salzburg is riding high and you know the other two here didn't all were more disappointed but they're still up there because I have only four teams but the biggest disappointment gotta be Lusk and let me say this when I say a new low has been reached I'm not saying in all of history because Lusk has been going through many 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 lows however in recent history uh, I think ever since Corona came flashback just before the corona break lusk has reached the last uh, 16 of the europa league playing against manchester united they were six points clear on top of the table they were everyone stalling in austria and it was one of those stories where you really feel that uh, lusk took uh, well, you know, it was a feel-good story because it was not uh, by a foreign consortium or whatever. No, they built this themselves from the ground up with local investors and everything seemed rosy and going well. Even though at that point, I think the first strike, and it was not, not a bad one, but their coach Oliver Glasner uh, had just left the ship. However, he was replaced by Valerian Ismail, who got everyone really, really, really behind the team because of his very contagious and very uh, emotional personality. And from that point on, except for a small period in 2020, everything seemed to go downhill. There was uh, the trouble with the uh, illegal training sessions in Corona times, where the Lusk suddenly got docked points, where they had appeals. So instead of three points ahead of Salzburg, we were then three points behind, and it was two points behind. Blah blah blah. I don't need to rehash all the all the stuff. Ismail, the uh, return round because of that was already very negative, not get, not going well. So we at least have the stadium uh, to look forward to. Yes, we have to build the stadium. We have plans. We actually hire a new coach with Dominic Talhammer, who was just very, very progressive coach, uh, also coming from the women's national national team. Uh, I was really high on that, um, and I think even the uh, even losing Don Don Frieser, we had good replacements. We had an excellent round back. Uh, just a missed penalty uh, in the last minute of the last game of the season. And if that would have gone in, Lask would have been first going into 2021. But then the cracks started showing there were injuries along the way, which could have been used as an excuse. And I have to say, I gave them that, that excuse for a whole lot, a lot, a lot of time. However, there were then other things that were started happening the stadium yes the old stadium needed to be torn down the last get to play in the one in Pushing, very small field and the results didn't start coming it just didn't look right because finally they had found a slightly different way because everyone we had this very recognizable very high intensity quick transition uh game high press blah 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 
that on a smaller field, uh, you know, that uh, opponents started to figure out. So Talhammer actually wanted to change it to be a little bit more possession based because we were now a top team in a way and kind of, you know, uh, be a little bit more flexible, which worked great on the big field on the athletic in the stadium with the athletic track. But then going back to the really, really tight stadium, this didn't work. And so play didn't look right. Um, unrest in the fan base a little bit. It seemed all not going well, and especially then the way that the championship round went. It was all trending down. There were then uh, within the coaching staff, which was also very progressive thinking. You know, we had uh, for every little thing, we had extra special coaches. There were some bust up with Pogatets getting uh, thrown out. Then the mastermind behind the rise of Lask, Jürgen Werner, got implicated in a third party ownership scandal because he had this uh, agency of a player agency that he was at time concurrently with Lask and then uh, running. And then, you know, he got rid of all of his shares, uh, was only Lask, but he never could get in. And seemingly there was some issues with third party ownership that some newspaper came out with the allegations are kind of now going nowhere. Problem is uh, everyone was hoping that he will come back well once he's cleared because he stepped down. Uh, and I think everyone recognized right this might be a big changing point. Um, and then uh, not too long ago, he said he will not come down, come calm back because he's not ha happy with some personnel mm -hmm. decisions and some other things. Rumors is that he and the president uh, of, are very much not agreeing because the president kind of is a very structured and very emotional person where he's more this cuddly bear who needs a little bit liberty. So there you go. Then the stadium was also backfiring. The old stadium was torn down, I think, by the end of February. And they said immediately we want to start. No. Then there were internal fr is internal friction um, with, uh, yeah, this will cost way more and we cannot aff afford it. So there are some legal suits ha happening this way. Big delay. Finally, the stadium gets going. So you think everything is going fine. Start of the season. Win at Altach against Rapid, very unlucky draw, though not, 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 not going well. I have to say, I think for the first five or six games, Lask was clearly underperforming, uh, but they were playing better. But then came after the first international break, the game against Austria Vienna, where it just, it just didn't click and the coach Talhammer had to be fired because uh, the messages that he sent out power public at the performance on the field did not match. In comes Ko Wieland, who already under Ismail a kind of was more or less, everyone said he was the tactical mind behind all that. So yeah, it's all right. However, the performance is the, for a while, yeah, the performances were all right, but you didn't get really the results, except the Admira game where I was at, where I really thought the first half was one of the worst that I've seen in a long time. They turn, turn, turn around. Yeah, going forward, the problem is the next game was Salzburg. You lose that one and now come coming back you play against Wolfsburg you dominate you catch a car car card counter attack you cannot get the ball into the net and the same thing happened now against Altach where a game I you know I don't even want to question the effort of the team however it was much less do dominant than against um, uh, Wolfsburg uh, but you had the game under control and you made adjustments which this is the first time that I heard that Lusk really adjusted for an opponent, but they wanted to be sol solid on the back and it worked for most of the time and they made intense pressure. However, at the end, you end up losing again and now you're last place. And I have to say, this is a low that I have not seen and it is worrying because Yes, you have good performances. I'm sure that Lusk should have had at least five points more than they currently have in the table. However, there's such a big confusion in how you want to play and what you can offer uh, that I am really, really getting worried. And these players are not used. They play, they used to play up and getting wins and, you know, playing on this emotion. They seem to be still caught in between a rock and a hard place of how to play. They don't know how to break down a tight defense uh, like Altach was yesterday. I literally have to say that when I was watching that game, yes, there were chances. And I thought, yeah, if this was two years ago, I was kind of sure 
that we will break them down. But however, we also lost. I said uh, I forgot. I forgot. We lost very important players that, admittedly, less less uh, in the spring. Traun and Raftel didn't play all that great anymore, but you know they are uh, fringe national team players, and especially Trauner, uh, who at, at a dead ball situation, uh, he was the one, the linchpin who scored. Then from from, uh, from that, he has not scored for Rotterdam yet, but he's at least organizing them. And this vision that he had um, in defense, he was not fast, but he always could anticipation. He he was absolutely crucial there. So. Uh, that was a vital piece lost as well. That could not that could not have been adequately replaced. And Valask was very active on the transfer market. I have to say, getting players from a decent Hartberg side, but you know, you you're not replacing like for like. And yes, you get people from the academy in, uh, but it is all so crazy. And. What's even worse is that, you know, you have international travel and now you play the Conference League and this Thursday, Sunday ridden is a killer for the league because you have many, you have a day more to prepare for the Europa League. But then you come back from like now Armenia, uh, where you basically spend a day traveling more, 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 more or less and you can only prepare very, very little for uh, the, on the national level, which does not really bode well. And while Lask is doing great for the Austrian league by uh, gathering points, I mean, uh, seven points is really, really good return and will be rewarded. I'm afraid that this distraction is not helpful for the team at this very, very moment. I did not like that the fans, when the, uh, who were amazing, I mean, they were supporting the team throughout. But when the team wanted to thank them after being completely rejected, that they sent them away, I think this was a little bit too harsh, in my opinion. However, there is a certain rot setting in uh, that I hope... I don't think that Lusk will get relegated, although for the first time I see that there's a chance that they get relegated. For the first time, and you will see it in the stats cast, for the first time Lusk is not odds on to land in the championship round. However, I also think that with this disaster, you know, you don't have a stadium, you can you have to play international games in Klagenfurt, which is a four hour drive from Linz across the Alps. It is also not helping things. You have to wave too much travel. You don't have to support internationally, although you will qualify now for the next round. I hope yeah, and they will qualify for the for, 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 for next round. So they will play Europa League, at least the Conference League Europa League playoffs. So um, <sighs> I actually secretly was hoping that they would get eliminated by St. Johnston and don't have to deal with Europe and can concentrate on, on, on the league and work there. I know financially it's a no-go, but yeah, as I said, it's a bad hit situation. I am worried, uh, and while I still think that they will eventually turn it around, maybe there's a new coach being hired, um, I secretly, and we'll get to the German team, I secretly hope that with the Frankfurt results going the way it's going, the Glasner will get fired by the winter break, and then Lars can snatch him up, although... But this would be the ideal because I don't see an obvious coach coming. I know that they're talk, talking about Ferdinand Feldhofer who did some good work at Wolfsburg, but nah, nah, uh, yeah, I don't know at this point. So yeah, this is where I am with Lusk. So uh, let's finish that chap chapter here. You got a whole lot of his, his uh, history and worries from my part. I want to... You know, the cup is also coming that they play at home against Tirol. Probably they should. Honestly, all focus needs to be on the championship at this very, very moment. And I wouldn't even care too much about the Conference League. Let's run quickly through Germany. As I said, I watched a little bit of a conference, but this was also a conference, which is kind of the goal show. But this was also very much early done. Uh, Dortmund had a 2-0 uh, uh, lead at halftime against Bielefeld, uh, a nice goal by Hummels uh, there and Bellingham. Uh, Holland will probably not play for Dor 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 Dortmund anymore. Bayern Munich just like that win 4-0 over Hoffenheim. That was not that hard. Gnabry, great Lewandowski goal again. Chupo Moting and Kingsley Coman lay, lay down, make it a very, very uh, clear game. Then the one th game where you really thought there is a sensation in there Greuther Fürth was the better team in the first half and totally deserved to be up with a penalty. 
However, then right after the half, Paulson makes it uh, one one. Then um, a force back penalty sets Leipzig away. Soboslai and uh, Ramos four one for Leipzig. So that the, uh, didn't go well. Um, big surprise! I said Freiburg is doing great. They completely deservedly won uh, at Wal Wolfsburg. Linhardt and Höhler scoring the goals. And Mark van Bommel, I said it in my uh, Champions League review. The last time he went to Austria, they lo he lost with PSV to Lusk 4-1. Yeah, the good times. Now he lost with Salzburg 3-1. He was immediately fired after the last close. Now he got he took one more, but he is out. A little bit too early, to, uh, to uh, if I might say so, but you know. There's a coaching change. Uh, Hertha completely wacko win against Gladbach. I mean, that goal was not meant to be. And But in the end, they ground out another big result. Uh, Köln come back from a 2-0 uh, deficit in a derby against Leverkusen. Uh, Modest uh, having those. And yeah, uh, Bochum winning against Frankfurt. And Frankfurt has probably a similar trouble as last class have with the Thursday-Sunday schedule. I actually, actually think they also missed a penalty when it, uh, in the 11th minute when it was already 1-0 for Bochum. So yeah, rather short on the German Bond Bundesliga, but I need to get this stuff off the chest for Lusk. In any case, yeah, new low has been reached, uh, at least since we made it to the Bundesliga. And they said it, Lusk had a steep rise and now is a gradual descent. I hope they can catch it. New stadium will be ready in 23. That will be a long time. Any case, let, let me know what you thought about what happened in these leagues and how you can simple if you sympathize with me or not. It's fine if you don't. It's just me talking. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.